Welcome to the highlights of the first day's play in the second test between the Windies and England. The action coming from uh, the island of Antigua. The Sir Vivian Richards Stadium, the host for this test match, a pitch that uh, had a liberal spread of grass all over it, if a little bit spaced out. And it was expected to be challenging, a little bit too paced. So on winning the toss, Jason Holder, the Windies captain, elected to field first. There was some inclement weather around which would have contributed to that decision. And just to confirm the teams for you in this test match, the Windies going unchanged from the team that won the first test match in Barbados, led by Holder with Gabriel, Joseph and Roach for company with the ball. And for England, two changes. Jennings was gone. Joe Denley at 32 years of age was in and Stuart Broad replacing Adil Rashid in the commentary box with Darren Ganga and Michael Atherton. It is a bright and breezy morning here in Antigua. We've had some early rain, but thankfully that rain seems to have disappeared and conditions just about perfect for the start of this second test match, which is a, a vital game in the context of the series with West Indies winning that first test match handsomely down in Barbados. And if they can get a good start here this morning in Antigua, they will fancy their chances of regaining the Wisdom Trophy. Jason Holder won the toss this morning and has asked England to bat first. It's Rory Burns just on screen there, but in the background you can see Denley walking to the crease 32 years of age and he's been given his first test cap wonderful morning for him congratulations to him and his family all the sacrifices they've made down the years to get this far he must have thought the chances of a test match career had gone but all the issues England have had at the top of the order has meant a chance for him rather late in the day but better late than never and uh, with an Ashes series just around the corner. It is a wonderful opportunity for him. So Keaton Jennings has been dispatched to the back benches. England have made two changes after that huge defeat in Barbados with Denley in for Jennings and Stuart Broad back in place of the leg spinner Adil Rashid. Oh, perilously close that was to the off stump. Roach beginning round the wicket as he likes to do to the left-handers. Burns, who played on, if you remember, in the first innings in Barbados, almost dragged one onto his stumps again. Bit of indecision. He was looking to play, then at the last minute decided to pull his bat out of the way. It was a little too late. Lady Luck on his side, just evading that off stump. straighter this time and Burns takes the opportunity to work it away through square leg it's the first boundary the first runs of the morning nice shot from Rory Burns he has a tendency to clip the ball off his stump his balance was quite good that is something you would see from the West Indies bowlers uh, he will probe outside the awesome and then search for that wicket taken delivery that comes straight. Rory Burns equal to the task. Has he taken it? I think he has. Jason Holder low down at second slip. Roach gets the right line and a bit of late movement finds the outside edge. The probing has paid off for Kima Roach. He's been searching for that outside edge from the start of his spell. Finally, he gets it. Very good delivery. He had to play Rory Burns. And a really smart catch from the captain. Jason Holder diving forward to his right. Listen, these they've opened their count in terms of wickets. Rory Burns goes for four. It's four for one. Roach back over the wicket. He's got two right-handers now. He's very, very effective against the left-handers. 
change his angle of approach and Holder has put in a short leg. Oh, must be out. Huge. Huge appeal. I thought Jason Holder had to send that upstairs. Uh, Rod it to Rick, we have a review close. for LBW. Okay, just rock and roll. I mean, I can clearly see that that has missed the bat, so I don't need to go to ultra edge. I can go straight to uh, ball tracking when you're ready. Ball tracking coming up now, Chris. Uh, impact is in line, and it is umpire's call on the wickets. So you'll be staying with your decision. Uh, original decision was not out, so you'll be staying with your not out decision. You're on screen now. Wow. Umpire's call, it says. Kimar Roach, when he followed through there to Jason Holder, was just saying, that's dead, dead. I think everybody thought that was out. Everybody except the umpire. Finally, finally Denley can open his account and that will make him feel a whole lot better, just dropping one into the offside and Bairstow responding immediately. Oh, toe end, would you believe it? What a loosener. A long hop and the toe end. And Denley's gone on debut. Well, this is a really loose shot. For a ball he didn't really have to play at. It's far away from him. Just that mental lapse. It's cost Joe Denley. Just look how wide this delivery is. Toe end of the bat. Really soft dismissal. One that the West Indies will welcome. Second wicket now goes down for England. That's that of Joe Denley, a six. 16 for two. One Joe replaces another. It's root for Denley. The England captain's in. And as per usual, he's in at around about 16 for two, 20 for two. England have lost their openers early. Wide of the crease again. Absolute beauty. Can't help but think that's the length on this pitch. Hesitancy from a batsman. Does he go forward, back? Definite movement. It's the seam. momentarily Joe Root because that was slightly aerial but a boundary ends the 13th over 23 for two well, that's what he's bowling for it's a setup get it out there go on have a drive it has to reach and stretch it's in the air a long time they do have a backward point to play as it is somehow it's run off the face of the bat and Bairstow will probably pick up four well they're finding it tough these two at the crease as they get together and Joe Root prods away at the pitch suspicious looks at the pitch Johnny Bairstow looking to leave and gets a bottom edge Flashed away. 
Ernesto throwing the kitchen sink at one that was just a little bit wider from Holder. Well, if you're going to flash, flash hard. Goes very quickly over the waiting slips. I think it's a fair shot if you get that short and wide. Don't dab at it, give it plenty. Oh, oh my goodness, what a delivery. What a catch. A parry. Teamwork in the slips. What a brute of a delivery for Joe Root to try and deal with. Well, how do you play that? Nigh on impossible, but fabulous from that slip cordon. Is it off the glove or the bat handle or the shoulder of the bat? We'll see. Ball pitches. Oh, look at the bounce off the top glove. Look at the bounce. Nearly floored him. That is terrific. A dual catch, real awareness, but what a brute of a delivery. Well, the parry from Campbell and the awareness of Hope was excellent, but that is unplayable. A brute of a delivery from Alzari Joseph. Uh, Send Joe Root dismissed for seven and England 34 for three. Batsman for England is Joss Butler. Heaven only knows what's going through his mind, having been up on the players' balcony watching that dismissal of his captain. That was raw, amazing bounce. Beautiful drive. Glorious drive from Johnny Bairstow. Well, you can always have that in your mind, that if it's up, it's off. Climbs into this Johnny Bairstow ball at very full length. Well, you think that the, the Windies have got the perfect ballers for these conditions. Tall ballers hitting the pitch of a fullish length, not drive length, a fullish. Now off the back foot, back-to-back -back boundaries from Johnny Bairstow. First holder a little full, then a little wide. And England's number three has taken full advantage. Fair enough shot. The ball short and wide, and this sits up nicely. Bairstow's moved on to 25 from 38 deliveries. Another very good shot from Bairstow. Beautiful poise and balance. Three boundaries in the over, 46 for three. Jason Holder dropped his head there at the end of that 17th over. 125K is a genuine half volley. And again, Johnny Bairstow's right, that's in my slot, it's going. Plays a lovely shot. His weight coming into the drive. Gets his fifth four. Again, a thump down the ground from Bairstow. He is catching in on anything marginally overpitched. England move on to 51 for three. Just taking advantage, hasn't he, Johnny Best? Oh, the ball that's right up to him. And it's good mental batting as well. The previous delivery zipped through. Wasn't hanging on the back foot into the shot. And with excellent stuff, and that has been thumped to the cover boundary. Well, if you're an England fan, you're liking this. He'd take the attack to the West Indies, disturb the length. He's had two or three nice half volleys, and then you drop your length back, as young Joseph has done. His ball short of a length, he's dropped it wide, and it hangs out there. And 
best or climbs in moves on to 37 five fours in the last eight balls lovely little counter attack from Bairstow brilliantly taken slip catching has been very good all has taken a good one this morning and now he's the recipient of a very safe hands England in further trouble yeah good bowling from Jason Holder Butler was trying to put him off his length I think he was just down the pitch a little at Jason Holder but of all the West Indies bowlers he's the most accurate the most consistent and when there's a bit in the pitch he'll find the edge as he does here as you say, West Indies slip catching has been solid this morning. It needs to be, it needs to back up the four seamers. Campbell this time in at second slip where Jason Holder would usually be if he weren't bowling. And a dangerous man has gone. Butler promoted in the order today ahead of Stokes, but gone for one. England 55 for four. Ben Stokes is the new batsman. that he's tightened up outside off stump but he's not uh, slowing him down any he's clubbed jason holder over mid off and that gentleman now he's back with the team 62 for four uh, he is what you call a prisoner of the moment as a supporter if you want to know how england are doing keep the camera on him Johnny Bairstow for this innings has decided that anything that allows him to play that aggressive shot, he's not going to go half-heartedly. Yeah, it's good batting. It's difficult conditions, and you've got to say to yourself as a batsman, what are my options? And I'd be saying, like Bairstow, anything short and wide, you have got to climb into. There are plenty of testing balls when you have to come half forward and you're not certain you get something short and wide, climb into it. Yeah. And an aggressive 50 for Johnny Bairstow. 51 to him out of a total of 71 for England. That tells you something about the pace at which he's gone. Yeah, he's played beautifully this morning, a combination of tighter defence, but also a desire to climb into anything loose. And Gabriel has given him two gifts in this over, one short and wide, the second one full and wide. And Holder needs Gabriel to find his rhythm here. It's flown quickly, high pace from Gabriel but he got too straight yeah he's just not quite on it here Shannon Gabriel for whatever reason whether it's the sandy based outfield whether it's that twinge to his hamstring that he felt early on whether he's just one of those days bowlers have them just can't quite get it right And they built on it this morning. Session where they've taken out four of England's wickets. That's lunch. There's umpire Damasina. And Jason Holder will be satisfied. He will ask for better next session. But he'll be reasonably satisfied with the potency in the first session. So a difficult batting morning, saw England finishing on 78 for four at lunch, 52 not out to Johnny Bairstow, he was in attacking mode, decided that, that was the best mode of operation on a very spicy surface, no one else getting into double figures, Ben Stokes not out eight.
Azari Joseph was the most successful of the Windies bowlers, a wicket for Kima Roach and Jason Holder as well. They didn't bowl maybe as well as uh, they would have hoped given the movement and bounce in the surface, but they'll be satisfied with uh, getting four wickets. Needs to start again, Johnny Bairstow. First ball after lunch. Oh, close. Close if he hasn't hit it. That was full. That's got to be close. They've used up one review. And they're going to use their second. Yeah, definitely missing the bat there. Thank you. OK, I'm happy that they uh, satisfied there's no bat involved. So if we can go to ball tracking, please. Ball tracking coming up now, Chris. Uh, impact is in line and hitting the wickets. Uh, your original decision was not out, so you'll be re uh, overturning that to out. You're on, on camera now. Yeah, that's a good review from the West Indies. Poor umpiring, I have to say. Two decisions today. Both of them look very out. And the West Indies have struck just after lunch, and it's the danger man, Bairstow. He will be disappointed. And it's straight after the lunch break. And we've seen this often, especially in that first test match. England losing wickets before breaks, after breaks. Yet again, Jason Holder. Well, the West Indies, uh, they strike. And it's the big fish, Johnny Bairstow. So gone for 52, 78 for five. New batsman, England's number seven, the mercurial Moen Ali. When he's good, he's very good. When he's bad, he's awful. Bagged a pair in the last game. And England need a bit of fight and a bit of character from Moen Ali. Very talented young man. He needs to show it now because they're in a hole. Well, he's off the mark. Punch down the ground. The outfield's been slow today. They'll just take a couple and that will cheer Moen Ali up. First runs in the series, 81 for five. Punches down the ground. And that's a good comeback from Stokes. Mental battle won by Ben Stokes. That is the beauty about test cricket, sir. You've got to dust yourself off and be prepared for the next delivery. And he was uh, equal to the task. A good composed stroke over the top of it and got a really good result. Edged away. And that will go away for four. 91 for five. That's the line, that's the length. That will affect the left-handers on this surface. Little bit soft hands kept it down. Lucky for him, it went in the gap as well. Oh yes, what a nut that is. There was a battle of words, but the battle that really counts has been won by Shannon Gabriel. And what is most important to me is the length of that delivery. It was pushing Ben Stokes back, not drawing him forward. That's where his strength lies as a bowler, Shannon Gabriel. He gets the result, finally. Guys, we'll just check to make sure it's a legal delivery. Yeah, no issue there. Another wicket for the West Indies. Wicket number six. Uh, and Stokes, uh, the all-rounder. After 23 deliveries, uh, he will have to depart. Just nibbling at this one outside the awesome. Very good catch by Shane Dorich. Just diving in front of first slip and finally Gabriel gets his first wicket of the innings. It is Ben Stokes gone for 14. It's 93 for 6. It's wafty, but he'll take him. 
And I reckon he'll take four. He covers the line of this delivery. And that's the biggest challenge for Moin Ali. Size of the delivery is going away and those coming in. This closes the pace, makes sufficient contact. Gets it past the man at mid on. Another boundary to him. Nobody knows where that's gone. The two fielders looking at each other at fine leg and deep square leg. Ball's gone between them perfectly for four. Andre comes up for England. Nicely controlled shot. Nicely on top of it. It's in the air quite a long time at leg slip. Gets four. Bit of a milestone for Moyn Ali. Brings up 11,000 first class runs. Nicely done from Moyn Ali. Very full ball, met with a straight back. Came into this game on the back of a pair, of course, and a, a bad pair at Bridgetown. Two poor shots. And looked a bit sketchy at the start here. Just given the resounding rattle on the helmet by Shannon Gabriel, but just in the last 15, 20 minutes, started to look a little more settled. Flashed away in between gully and back for point. And folks picks up his second four, but a width offered and gleefully accepted. Yeah, to get something like this on this surface, you've really got to catch in. One ball hit on a bowl with the short and wide is such a gift. Hovering on that off stop, trying to get the batsman just thinking about whether forward or back. Ali's going to take him on, perhaps. That might not be the worst idea or tactic. Well, you can see what Moen Ali is thinking. We've got Gabriel and Joseph, and Holder and Roach on a pitch that's going up and down. If they give me a bit of rust and chase, I'm going to cash it. Immediately brings a change of field. Holder has posted a man on the cover boundary and he's also pushed long off into position from mid off. Tries a catch it, parried by Dowrit. Short leg couldn't hang on. 124 for six. I reckon it's spun a bit this one though. You mentioned that first over that he bowled at the odd ball moved off the straight. It was kind of angled down, but the sense that the ends are quite dry as well. The dampness that we got this morning from the overnight rains and the sweating of the pitch under the covers wasn't going to last very long. And eventually the pitch will help the spinners as well. Flash through point, very full delivery. And a wristy shot from Moen Ali. Outfield is slow, but that will go for four. Well, Holder's got to try and get a grip on things here. This partnership now is worth 37. Not huge, but in the context of a low-scoring day so far, reasonably significant. Just the cricket in the last 10 or 15 minutes from West Indies has been not of the best quality. A few too many loose deliveries from Alzari Joseph. The full ball punched away for four. And the 50 partnership has come up between Folks and Moinali. 
and they've looked fairly secure for all the travails that batsmen have had on this surface. They've been quite steady. Yeah, they played well, good tempo. Moe looked a little bit nervous when he first came in. Understandable after bagging a pair, but as his innings has progressed, he's looked more secure. Ben Folks has looked very compact. That's gone. How far has it gone? Looks as though it might be all the way. A six. Yeah, hitting with the breeze. Brings up the 150 for England. But nervous to start, Moen Ali. He's just getting into his game now. Tossed up outside off. Beautiful swing of the arms. went hard at it again it was maybe a, a little bit closer to him than he thought but it brings up 50 for Moen Ali his 14th and at a critical time stage of the innings and context of the game lovely shot now, will Long Owen come across in time? No. Roach just retrieves the ball and, and it sums up this partnership, the quality of that shot to go to tee by Ben Folks. Yeah, excellent. The England fans haven't had a lot to cheer about today. It was a gem of an innings from Bairstow earlier, before lunch. But this partnership has been ideal on a pitch that has eased. West Indies attack that have just tired a fraction. Very good from Ali. Very good from Folks as well. A hard-working session. England head to tee on 172 for six. Moin Ali top scoring with 55 not out. Ben Folks and 32 in a partnership with 79. Half century to Johnny Bairstow as well. 52 in quick time. Kimar Roach and Elzari Joseph with a couple of wickets apiece on a helpful pitch. Gabriel with one and Jason Holder also with a wicket. side Kimar Roach uh, collectively the Windies bowlers well they've directed most of the deliveries uh, away from the stumps <laughs> glorious just presented the full face of the bat knew that there was only one field uh, at point and a little bit of elevation and that's another boundary you know I don't think he moves his feet at all Moin Ali just that little trigger movement and then he stands firmly watches the ball and he goes up and over he gets the width up in the air should be taken Shannon Gabriel yes makes no mistake did that ray off a length as well went high and it was full Kima Roach gets his third wicket of the innings well a suspicious look at the pitch from Moyn Ali looks to be a tame dismissal the foolish length and it hits the top of the bat doesn't it right where that maker's name is and it just loops into the air gets it in there eventually Shannon Gabriel and Ali, an enterprise in 60 for him 178 for seven This will be a good test for Sam Curran, and one that uh, he passes with distinction on that particular delivery. But he got a bit of a roughing up from Shannon Gabriel in Barbados, who's quick. And, uh, these are not easy conditions, even if they've calmed a little bit from what we saw this morning. Still tricky, so a good test this will be for young Sam Curran. to go 
what a way to go. Ben Folks had battled, played really well. Important partnership with Moen Ali. And you'd have to say a bit of ill fortune. It was the right shot to play to a short ball from Gabriel, but he's dragged it onto his stumps. Yeah, he got through a shot too early, and, and he really had essayed a couple of pulls, come hooks at Gabriel in previous overs here after T that climbed over or under the glove. This time he threw a shot too early. Curious way that a couple of wickets have fallen for England. Folks goes for 35, 186 for eight. Bounce and taking the shoulder of the bat. Holder attacking with a fourth slip in the cordon. And there will be no recovery from the lower order, no recovery led by Sam Curran. England 186 for nine. Excellent from Roach because once he's gotten the ball slightly forward into the green area, asking the batsman to get forward, he's found in different bounce. At times he's been stuck on a good length on the surface. With the movement he's been getting and the bounce, he needed to be fuller. And he's done so twice here after T. Six to Curran, one eight six for nine. Oh, there it was, the Yorker. The Yorker as Anderson backed away, expecting a short ball. This was very full, very straight from Shannon Gabriel, and England have been bowled out after T here on the first day for 187. And was showing plenty of his stumps there to Shannon Gabriel. He's ended up outside the return crease. And once this was straight, there wasn't much in the way of Anderson's defences or body in front of his stumps. Executed like a, a fast bowler in rhythm. Good thinking from uh, the big burly Shannon Gabriel third lowest total at this ground after Bangladesh's 43 and 144 last year. Excellent work and particularly after T, I thought the lines from the West Indies seamers was very very good much improved from the middle session where 94 runs came for just two wickets. An excellent job by the Windies bowlers to bowl England out for 187. The top score coming from the bat of Moin Ali for 60, a half century for Johnny Bairstow as well. And good contribution from folks with 35. 61 overs shared up between the Windies bowlers. The outstanding one, Kimar Roach with four for 30 and very well supported by Shannon Gabriel with three wickets and a couple for Alzari Joseph. You've got the four seamers, three seamers and the swing of Sam Curran and Moeen Ali. Possibly some stuff from Joe Root or Joe Denley if needed. But Dues, it's all about the seamers coming out now. Who would you say poses the greater threat? The excellence of Anderson with his control or that man back in England's side at six foot six, six foot seven. Batting, especially with this new ball, is not going to be easy to start with. It'll get easier as, as time goes on, as it, as it normally does. Um, Johnny Bairstow shows that you can play on this pitch and uh, so did Moeen Ali. So it's going to be very interesting but there is going to be an examination of seam now which the West, these two West Indian openers are going to have to get through. They're interested to know how they propose to go about this mentally and technically. They've been in the field cheering on their bowlers as they've made the ball leap at the England batsman but now it's their turn. They're in the firing line, and it's going to start at the Sir Andy Roberts end with James Anderson. First ball of West Indies first innings. Yeah! Massive appeal. Kumar yeah! Dharmasena says no. You need to show a cool head in terms of using the DRS. Stokes perhaps suggesting it's a bit high. We 
that front foot doesn't really go anywhere and he's struck just above above the pad so we can safely say that that would have been going over and hit on the pad but almost certainly going down four without loss after four Trying to go a little fuller. Campbell just slipped at the non strikers, but he'll get back for a couple. Ends the sixth over. West Indies eight without loss. That's lovely. Nicely played. It won't go for four. Just a controlled push for a couple. But over the years, for such a successful bowler, Anderson, various people have been calling for him to bowl fuller. What he tends to do is go back of a length, back of a length, then full, and it's almost like the batsman's eyes light up when he finds the edge. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Broad will not be amused with that. A T20 dill scoop because there's no fine leg. Oh, my gosh. How the game has changed, Ian Bishop. It's driven nicely down the ground. Half volley put away for four. First boundary of the innings. It's a nice piece of cricket, man, because I've been asking for Broad to pitch the ball up. A little bit more maybe he's gone too full but it's also good batting and a good lesson for Campbell that sometimes you just have to wait make the bowler bowl to you and where you want him to come and you get benefit from it good cricket yeah. that's better that's better that's better no well they're interested here well, they will have a chat. That looked pretty straight. And Joe Root goes for it. Yeah, that look, I'll and get a zoom up on that, but it does look like he's just over the crease. Yeah, he's definitely got nothing behind the line there. Yep, so that's, I'll go back straight on field. That's a no ball. Yep, that's a no ball. just dribbled through to the wicket keeper 21 overs have been bowled West Indies have stood firm and they play really well the two openers there 30 without loss and West Indies trail by 157 a good day's work when these teammates uh, will be patting the backs of Bratwit and Campbell because uh, they have rounded a fairly good day for the West Indies it's not been an easy session for batting by any means. Uh, lots of deliveries, uh, getting some extra bounds, some lateral movement. But through it all, they've survived. The players look very assured at the crease. Bratwit in particular looked very assured, very balanced. Solid work by the West Indies opening pair of batsmen, Brathwaite and Campbell, to negotiate that new ball and end the day without any loss to back up the good work done by their bowlers. 30 without loss at the end of day one. The seam attack of England tried their very best. There was still movement off this surface, but they just could not find that breakthrough. It meant that uh, the Windies, though, were still trailing by 157 runs at the end of the opening day's play. Hope you've enjoyed all the action and the highlights uh, from day one. Look forward to your company next time. Bye for now.